Hello everyone, bringing you a video today talking again about the 1958 pattern web equipment. In the previous video we looked at 1958 pattern web equipment set up pretty much as it was intended to be used, that is for uh, armoured infantry essentially. That was what the equipment was intended for, it was designed with the armoured infantrymen in mind, obviously deployed using armoured personnel carriers on the plains of Europe. But of course the British Army in the 1960s and through into the 1970s and 80s was still being deployed in various other theatres as well and 1958 pattern was the standard equipment. We did also talk a little bit about the Falklands in the previous video. Obviously the equipment was by and large used as it was intended there with a full set of equipment, the yoke, the pouches etc. We're going to look in this video at three different scenarios where the equipment was worn in a stripped down or a modified configuration. So we have Borneo which is what we're going to talk about first, Aden and then Northern Ireland. And as I say, this is just to have a look at the equipment mixed and matched in this instance with 1944 pattern and worn in a stripped down configuration for essentially public order duties in the other two mannequins. As I say, this is going to be a slightly shorter video, I think, because obviously we're not looking at the full equipment sets. We're just looking at 1958 pattern used in three other scenarios aside from that for which it was really designed. So starting with the mannequin we have here, this is to represent a British infantryman or a Royal Marine in Borneo. Uh, in the 1960s, around 1965, so the latter, latter part of the uh, Indonesia-Borneo confrontation. As you can see on the mannequin here, we have a mix of different components. We actually have the 1958 pattern belt replaced with a, a roll pin belt, which really has a slide pin buckle on it, made out of a cargo strap, which has been doubled over. This has been quite nicely converted into a, a belt, rather than just being a section of strap. It's been doubled over, stitched, and had a loop added here for the uh, section that uh, passes through the buckle for the, the end of that to keep that from flopping around. So quite nicely made. Not everyone replaced the standard belts with the roll pin. You would see 1944 pattern belts and 1958 pattern belts used in Borneo. That's just a detail to mention here. On each hip, we have the standard first issue 1958 pattern ammunition pouches. You can see that here, the side of the lid here, the stiffened section there, and then this shallower depth compared to the third pattern. So obviously mid-1960s, the initial components of 1958 pattern were still the most common. We'll start moving this round now and have a look at some of the other components we have on the mannequin here. It's a bit back heavy this one, so I'm having to give a little bit of support. We can see here the ammunition pouch, as I say, the left hand ammunition pouch with the bayonet loops, the bayonet not carried in this instance. We do have a Golok pattern machete in its sheath here on the belt, as you can see there. Not a patterned part of the equipment, but very much associated with it and extensively used in Borneo. And then in place of the pack, we have the 1944 pattern haversack carried on the back here. And then down on the belt, we also have 1944 pattern water bottles in their carriers at the back here. We'll move this round now and have a look at the back so you can see these details. Looking at the back here, you can see the water bottles carried round on the back of the belt here. We have the right hand ammunition pouch here with the, you can see the little pouch there for the Energa grenade launcher, grenade adapter, rifle grenade adapter there on the side of the pouch, typical. And then we do have another component of 1958 pattern carried on the back of the haversack here, which is the first issue water bottle pouch. And it's quite common to see these clipped onto the uh, two little eyelets in the back of the haversack there, which are really designed for use with M1910 hanger hooks or the M1910 style hanger hooks, which are part of the 1944 pattern equipment. But the water bottle pouch with its sea hooks can be clipped through there as well, and that's quite common to see. There's a fairly decent water load here with the two bottles on the belt and the one on the back of the haversack. And certainly uh, accounts of the time state that men would generally carry three water bottles, whether on a short or a long patrol. Water supply, very important thing in the jungle where you're not sure where the next jungle stream is going to be and the time it takes to filter and sterilize that water before drinking it. So we have the, the water carriage there. So the only three components on this mannequin, which were from the 1958 pattern, are the ammunition pouches and the water bottle pouch at the back there. This is fairly typical of the mix and match situation that is, uh, was prevalent in Borneo with the 1944 and 1958 pattern being mixed. Earlier on, certainly in Sarawak, slightly uh, different situation in Sarawak, men did arrive with full sets of 1958 pattern, but certainly by this latter stage in the jungle warfare of the 1960s, a real mix and match was seen, and that's what I've tried to illustrate here on the mannequin. So that's the mannequin set up for Borneo. As I say, we've run through the equipment there to show you some of these components of 1958 pattern used in a mix and match with 1944 pattern. Just to obviously mention the uniform briefly, we have the 1950 pattern 
bush jacket and trousers here and then the typical British jungle hat there which has been somewhat set up. This crown's been stoved in and the side stitched up which was fairly common to see at the time. So basically the standard British jungle uniform of the time period. There were also other components, different shirts and so forth, but this is fairly typical. So just to run over the uniform there as well. That's Borneo. We'll move on now to talk about Aden. So this mannequin represents a British soldier in Aden, the mid middle to late 1960s, 65, 67, that sort of time frame. And it's made to be as generic as possible really in that regard. Obviously, unit headdress was often worn, but there are quite a few photographs out there showing men on public order duties wearing steel helmets, which is what we have here, obviously. We'll talk about the equipment first of all. This is a very stripped down form of 1958 pattern. We have the belt here and then a single ammunition pouch. This was often supplemented with bandoliers of ammunition as well, but a single ammunition pouch, the left hand ammunition pouch carried around on the hip here. This is again the first issue uh, type of pouch with the stiffened side to the lid there. Second issue would be very common at the time as well, of course. Something quite commonly seen is the, in this instance, a field dressing, a first field dressing taped to the belt there, either at the front or to the rear. In this instance, taped round on the front there. So other than the water bottle pouch, which we'll talk about in just a minute, there's not a huge amount more of the of kit and equipment here. So we'll just move this around and have a look at the water bottle pouch round on the other hip. So around on the right hip, you have the first issue water bottle pouch here. Again, often you will see 1944 pattern mixed in and you'll see a 1944 pattern water bottle carried. It just depended on the unit, the particular time and particular individuals within a unit, you see a mix. But we do have the 1958 pattern water bottle pouch and the, the plastic water bottle and cup in there, of course. So that's basically it for the equipment. One other thing to mention is round on the other hip. The light anti-gas respirator is carried here on the strap over the shoulder, as you can see in its haversack. There's a real mix match of how these were carried. Uh, looking at period photographs, sometimes clipped onto the back of the belt. Of course, this does have C hooks on the back, so it can be clipped onto the belt, sometimes carried on its shoulder strap over the shoulder like this, as you can see. And again, respirators being carried for use when anti-riot agents were, were used, tear gas, and obviously soldiers would need to protect themselves with a respirator when operating in those conditions. So that's carried around on the hip there. There's not a huge amount more to talk about really on the mannequin. We have the standard 1964 pattern wool shirt here. Obviously air techs, bush jackets would also be worn quite extensively and air tech shirts as well in both khaki and in green. But we do have the wool shirt here, which certainly turns up at the time as well. And then the 1950 pattern khaki drill trousers worn here, essentially identical to those we saw on the Borneo mannequin, but made in khaki rather than green for use in arid or desert hot weather environments as opposed to jungle. So that's the uniform on the mannequin as well, just to run over that briefly. But you can see a very stripped down set of 1958 pattern, and we're going to see something very similar on the Northern Ireland mannequin, which is what we'll look at next. This is the final mannequin we're going to look at, and this represents a, a British soldier serving in Northern Ireland in the early 1970s. So about five years on, around about from service in Aden. And certainly the belt kit we have here is very similar to that we looked at on the mannequin representing a British soldier in Aden. So it's a very similar stripped down set of equipment. We have, again, the ammunition pouch round on the left hip here. This is just fairly typical. There are, of course, lots of variations in this. In this instance, a respirator isn't being carried, for example, and would be in certain circumstances, generally the S6 by this point. But ammunition pouch there, this being the third pattern. So we've jumped to the third pattern now, slightly enlarged carrying capacity, very common by the early 70s, having been introduced in the 60s. 1958 pattern belt, and then round on the other hip, we again have a water bottle pouch. We'll have a look at that in just a moment. On the front of the belt here, we again have a dressing taped on, fairly typical, this being a, a Second World War era shell dressing, just taped onto the front of the belt there. Again, very typical to see at this time period in, in photographs of troops in Northern Ireland. This is specifically representing troops on public order duties in an urban setting, obviously operating out in the countryside. There'd be a very different set of kit and equipment, generally speaking. Uh, but this is typical of, of troops in an urban environment on public order duties. We'll move this around and just have a look at the detail of the water bottle pouch on the right hip there. On the right hip here, if we lift the arm out of the way, you can see here again the dressing round on the belt there, taped on, and then the water bottle in a second issue water bottle pouch round on the hip there. Again, very, very simple stripped down set of equipment, belt, ammunition, water, and a dressing taped on there as well. 
The uniform and equipment is typical of British troops on public order duties in the early part of Operation Banner. So we have the Mark IV steel helmet here, adapted for anti-riot duties with the visor, which you can see here, hinged perspex visor, which comes down the front there to protect the face. M1952A body armour, US design body armour, also produced in, in the United Kingdom as well. Typical of the two patterns of US body armour seen at this time, you have the three-quarter collar or M69, and then the M1952A which we have here. So a, a mixed match of, of US design body armor there, and of course different covers and things would be introduced going forward. We have in this instance the 1968 pattern combat jacket, combat smock recently introduced, and that's basically the kit and equipment we have on the mannequin here. As I say, a very stripped down set of 1958 pattern akin to that which was used in aid and obviously in public order duties again, or anti-riot duties. So. That's been a look through 1958 pattern used outside of its initial sort of design brief, I guess you could say. Uh, it's designed as a set of equipment for use by armoured infantry, as I say, and this is just three examples of how the equipment was adapted and mixed and matched with 1944 pattern, as we saw, for use fairly early in its service life in the 1960s and early 1970s. I hope you found it interesting looking at this, as I always say. If you have and you'd like to see more from the channel, please do consider subscribing if you haven't already. And whether you're newly subscribing or you've previously subscribed, please do make sure you hit the little bell, the notification button down below. That will, of course, alert you when I upload future videos. If you really like my uploads and you would like to support the channel, you can. Both Patreon and PayPal are linked down below. And as ever, a massive thank you to everybody who supports the channel using those two methods. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much indeed. If you'd like to follow the channel on social media, you can. Facebook, Instagram and Twitter are all linked down below. And if you'd like to get in touch but you don't really use social media, there is of course an email address down there as well. That's everything for this video, so until next time, bye for now.